the power. This mag. What up, family? Too Cool TB, representing Powered by Vibes. And we're back with another episode of Artist Discovery. Today, we're gonna check out an artist from California. He from California. We're gonna check out some Daryl Tron. He's an artist from California, as I stated. He has some background in music. Apparently, he studied music in college. Shout out to the Abba Collegiate Musician and myself. And he's been making music for a long time. Looks like he has a musical background growing up. And now he's making some funk music. So yeah, shout out to Daryl Tron. I like this. I like the name too. So we're going to check out a song that's called Our Love Was Strong. And this is the official video. So without any further ado, let's just jump right into it. And we're going to talk about it as it's playing. I have one of the Facebook groups that I'm in. I'm out there looking for you guys, by the way, so just know that. It's a nice little groove right there. It's got like Hall and Oats mixed with like flight time production type vibes happening here. I like it. It's a nice groove, man. That's a really nice little keyboard sound going on there, too. It's like, it's like a DX type of keyboard sound going. Just like a real simple drum machine beat. That does sound... I don't know what kind of bass line that is. I'd be curious to find out. I mean, it sounds kind of analog-ish. A bass line sounds thick though. I like that bass sound. That sounds good. Just real simple, nice little flourishes. <clears throat> home studio. Shout out to the home studio grind. Nice little lead synth breakdown, I like it. As a video maker myself, I actually do like the music video. He does a good job like telling a, a story here with some like cinematography type things trying to go on. Why are you cheating? Tell me, baby, girl, tell me what was wrong. Why are you cheating? Tell me, baby, girl, tell me what was wrong. Why are you cheating? Tell me, baby, girl, tell me what was wrong. 
Very nice. I think that's the end. All right, let's bring it back to my beautiful face. Very nice. All right, segment number one, reaction. So my reaction to hearing this song when I first previewed it and now listening to it on camera for the first time. I like this one. This was like a really nice groove, you know, like this, this was everything that was promised. It truly was. I liked it. This is a really nice groove. I can hear the kind of throwback influence. It's got like a lot of 80s type of sounds. I like it because I'm into that kind of music heavy, like the, the flight time productions type stuff, uh, hollow notes type of stuff, prints, early prints, I should say. Uh, SOS, Gap Band, all that kind of stuff. I like all that type of music. So to me, I'm all into those those 80s sounds like that. And I think that that really came ac across really clear. This was a really nice jam. I like how it was written as well. I just thought it was really cool. Like it's a, it's a cool little like uh, R&B jam to like how it's... <laughs> Well, we're a huge cheat. <laughs> I love it. And so that was what my first reaction was too. There's a lot of creativity here too with the the video uh, making. You know, it shows that you can just make a simple video because honestly, this is a video that could have just been filmed all by yourself and it came out pretty good. So, you know, like I said, somebody that makes videos, myself, it is in to uh, videography a little bit. I think that the video was pretty cool. Um, yeah, just. That's all I got to say on you know, the reaction. That's what my reaction to it was. It's just a really nice jam, and I liked it. Now, next segment we're going to go to, we're going to go to the breakdown. So I was breaking it down a little bit as we were listening to it. Instrumental here was real simple, which actually works better for this. And that's also what kind of gives it that influence of more, I guess that would probably be more of the early 80s type of production sound. It was the late 80s once we started getting into like the new jack swing and stuff like that the production started to get more busy so this was is definitely more of an early 80s sound because it's more simple it had kind of like a, a dx sounding um key sound going on that was just the basics of it so to put that in layman's terms for people that maybe don't know as much about music that watch these the dx was a type of a keyboard that they used to use back then. It was a type of a synthesizer. And that's what gave music from that era its distinctive sound. And that's just something in general with every era, the instruments that they're using to create that music is gonna give it a distinctive sound. Vocal sounded nice. There's some pretty nice vocal production techniques too going on. Like there's a little bit of doubling in there. There was some nice using, uh, use of different vocal uh, ranges as well. So yeah, this is a nice little song right here. So now, let's take it to the critique section of the review. The, the part that always scares me to do, but I always try to be very honest because this is helpful for not just the artist, not just for, but it's helpful for me because I've learned a lot doing these, listening to other, uh, what other people are doing and being critical of how I'm listening to it and seeing, okay, what am I hearing? What can be improved? And it's also helpful for everybody. It's helpful for all of us, which is the reason why I do this. So with all that being said, the critique section, what I would say for my critiques, I like the sounds that you use. The only one thing I might mess with a little bit more, I felt like that main keyboard sound that you were doing was a little bit thin. I think somehow we need to add some more booty to that sound a little bit. So I don't know if I maybe put maybe mess with the effects possibly because I know sometimes the tricks that I do when I'm doing these 80s type of sounds it's like drown keyboard sounds and reverb and delay or sometimes add some chorus to it and a little bit of reverb and that just makes it more full sounding. It makes it kind of fill out all the sonic space a little bit better. A trick to how a lot of producers did this back in the day, like if you were to Michael Jackson's music, which I would guess you are, Bruce Swedeen, the producer for the Thriller album and the Bad album, he kind of talked about how when they were doing the synth sounds for Thriller, they actually would play the synth 
in a real room through loudspeakers and record that. So that was the first critique I had was just with the keyboard sound, but that's just for me personally. You know, that it could also be the way that you wanted it. So you put it that way on purpose. The second thing I would say is on the vocals. I'm not gonna give my spiel about vocals because I've done it probably a hundred times now during the Artist Discovery series. Look at an older video if you wanna know what gives me the right to talk about vocals. So um, with the vocals, you have very good pitch. You really do, like, because I know that was in your bio that you discovered you have perfect pitch. That shows, because you have very, very good pitch. The rhythms were really good and really intact. That's what reveals that you actually know what you're doing. However, the only thing that I would say, for me personally, I just want to hear a, a little bit more energy with the vocal performance on this song. That's the only thing that I would say. I felt like it just, it needed a little bit more energy. Maybe have some more rises in the volume or you like, Get to points where you kind of get loud a little bit and then you know maybe sell the emotion to me a little bit harder. I think the actual musical aspects of it were amazing. You did a great job. I was an instrumentalist all these years and what who I was learning from was actually theater people. I learned that from them that you had to really sell that emotion hard when you're singing. So I try to bring that into like the newer songs that I do which you guys will hear this summer with my band finally releases our stuff. Oh, so yeah, keep up the good work. I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably run over on this one, so I'm gonna have to find some long-winded stuff to edit out. So now, we're gonna take it to the part of the review where we're gonna compare this against other songs that I've reviewed thus far for 2022. And we're gonna see where it ranks on the artist discovery. Billboard chart. All right. So the billboard chart is not a reflection of the quality of the song. There's a list of recommendations that I do over here. Check out the chart for 2021. You'll get an idea of what we're looking for. The top three are very good. This is going for what's the most popular and what's going to be the most radio ready to play for everybody. So I'm going to rank this one. I was actually really feeling this song right here. I'm going to number 10 with it. So rationale, we're going to talk about a song above it and a song below it. A song right above it. Sapphire Rose, song for me. That's the Australian singer and songwriter. Activist, does a lot of great things in their community. And that's a song that's kind of an uplifting song that's discussing some important kind of introspective uh, issues. I think that that one compared to this one, that one, it just sounded a little bit more grand, a little bit more full. And I thought that for that one, it's just for recommending to other people. That one just might grab attention a little bit faster just due to the fact that it's a little bit louder and more full of a sound. So that's the only thing I would say about it. I think it's pretty much even though. It's very close. Like I, it, Honestly, I could go either way. I could do this one as number nine or I could do uh, the song we just listened to as number nine. It's almost like a tie. Then it's right above Joe Matera plus Corgis, always a sunny so that day. One, I just feel like this song is a harder groove to me than um, Always a Sunny Day was. That one's more of like a, a classic rock inspired kind of song. It has like Beatles type sounds and stuff going on in there. And this one to me, I just feel like it's a little bit faster, which I prefer. And it has a little bit more action to it that people will enjoy. All right, so that's the billboard chart. So let's bring it back to my beautiful face and close this thing out. All right, so final segment, if you're watching. So to Daryl Tron, if you're watching, what I would have to say is keep up the good work. I think you, this is honestly some really, really great music. I like music like this. This stuff sounds great. I can tell that you're a very talented and skilled musician. So everything that, that you've done on here musically is very good and I'm looking forward to hearing more of your work because I just like this type of a vibe of music and who knows maybe we could collab someday because this is definitely my type of vibe right here you know so I could get down with this so that's all I got to say to you is keep up the good work I love this type of music I think that you're doing a great job and you're really doing it justice I can tell that you really care about the music that you're making and you put a lot of effort and thought and passion into what you're doing so Keep it up. I'm going to definitely be keeping an eye out for you. All right. So to Daryl Tron, to all the fans and everybody watching at home, love what you do. I enjoyed listening to this song. And I hope that all of you did too. Spread nothing but peace and love.
to all of you, and I will see you on the next review. The power is back.